Hi, I'm Eric Singer, and I'd like to welcome you to the world of drumming and congratulate you on your purchase of what I think are the best drums in the world, Pearl. By purchasing a Pearl kit, you now own a high-quality, great-sounding drum set, which should give you years of dependability and help you build a strong foundation from which to learn. From entry level to custom one-of-a-kind Pro kits, Pearl also has one of the best warranty programs in the business. You can get replacement parts anywhere in the world, and they have a lot of available accessories and add-ons to make this kit customized and personal to your liking. This video will take you through the unpacking and assembly process of your new drum set, give you the basics of setting up and tuning, and demonstrate some beats and techniques to help get you started. Pearl also recommends that you practice as often as possible. And if you can, find a teacher in your area to help get you some basic foundation and proper technique to get you started. Also, there's massive amounts of videos and magazines available to give you lots of information about drumming. All the information we cover in this video is also available on Pearl's website, www.pearldrum.com. Check it out. Remember, playing is about having fun. The more you practice, the more fun you'll have. So let's get started. Your set came packaged in two boxes marked A1 and A2. And if you purchased Pearl Symbols, it would have come in a stage ready performance pack just like this. Now for the purpose of this video, we're going to use a five piece standard configuration of a Pearl Export Series drum kit, which consists of a 22 inch bass drum, 12 and 13 inch rack toms, a 16 inch floor tom with the legs, five and a half by 14 inch metal snare drum, a pearl bass drum pedal with the beater, two tom-tom arms, a snare stand, hi-hat stand, a boom cymbal stand, and a straight cymbal stand. Now, if you purchased a Pearl Export Select or Form Series drum kit, all the performance, tuning, and assembly techniques that we cover will work just as fine for those as well. Now, as you can see, the rack toms and the snare drum come already assembled with this kit, but the bass drum floor tom, and all the hardware are unassembled. So we'll put that together first. Now that we've unpacked the drums, you want to locate the box marked tension bolt with hook. Inside this box should be your tension rods with the claw hooks for your bass drum, your tension rods for your 16 inch floor tom, a pearl drum key, and a rubber strip with an adhesive back for the metal hoop of the bass drum, which serves to protect the metal hoop from getting scratched up and give a better grip for the bass drum pedal. Now we're going to install the drum heads on the floor tom first with the batter side on top. So you want to place the floor tom on your work surface with the floor tom leg brackets closest to the work surface. Now the batter head is the head which goes on the top of the drum which you use to strike or hit the drum. And with a Pearl Export Series kit, you'll get two types of heads. A Protone head, which goes on the batter head and a Pearl logo head, which goes on the bottom or resonant side of the drum. And if you purchase a form series drum kit, you'll get two Pearl logo series heads, and they can go on either the top or the bottom. Now you want to grab your 16 inch steel hoop and place it on top of the drum head. Line up the holes so they line up with the lugs or the tension casings. And you want to grab one of the tension rods, place it through the hole and feed it in to the tension casing. Now you notice that I fed it in by hand until it was thumb tight as far as it could go by hand. We want to do the same thing for the rest of the lugs on top. Now that all the tension rods are installed on the top, make sure they're all even hand tight and flip the drum over and do the same thing with the bottom head. Now that we've applied both the floor tom heads, we want to make sure that the tension rods are finger tight 
We'll get to the tuning portion later on. We're going to put the floor tom legs in. You want to place the floor tom leg in the bracket with the angle away from the drum. Now that we have the floor tom fully assembled, we're going to place it off to the side and move on to the bass drum. Place your bass drum on your workstation with the edge closest to the tom-tom mount in the up position. Next, grab your pearl black logo front bass drum head, place it over the bearing edge. You want to try to line the pearl logo up as even as possible with the tom-tom mount. Next, grab your bass drum hoop. When you notice that there's a flat edge and a round edge, you want the flat edge against the drum head. Place it as even as possible. Next, we're going to grab one of the claw hooks and tension rods and place it over the hoop and then feed it down into one of the tension casings. Now do the same for the rest of them. Remember to make sure that all the lugs are hand tight. Let's flip the drum over and install the other head. Find your clear pearl batter head and install it with the logo in the position furthest away from the tom mount. Grab your hoop and don't forget about the round and flat edges. Put the flat edge on the side touching the head. And we're going to install the claw hooks and tension rods the same as we did the other head. Let's flip the drum over into its plain position and extend the spurs. Loosen the wing nut that allows the spur to swing forward and lock it down. Do the same for the other side. Now loosen the wing nut that allows the spur to telescope or extend out. And we'll do the same for the other side as well. Now you want to extend the spurs evenly on both sides and have the front of the drum lifted up so the bottom hoop is approximately about an inch off the plane surface. The spurs offer both a rubber and spike tip. Pearl recommends you use the rubber tip for most all plane situations. Never use the spike tip on any surface that could become damaged. Let's assemble the bass drum pedal. You should have a pedal assembly, a bass drum beater, and a key pack consisting of a drum key and an Allen wrench for making adjustments on the pedal. Unfold the pedal and spin the cam until it raises the footboard. Slide the spring over the roller until it fits into the groove. You'll notice that you have an adjustment here for spring tension by loosening the top lock nut you can use the bottom nut to make adjustments to tighten or loosen spring tension. When you're finished with your adjustment, lock the lock nut down again. Now you want to remove the plastic that came on the beater and on the footboard. Next, grab your beater and insert the shaft into the receiving hole, exposing about a quarter inch of the shaft through the bottom. Then you want to take your drum key and tighten it up. Next, locate the rubber pad that we talked about earlier, and we're going to put that into the bottom side of the groove of the hoop on the batter side of the bass drum. 
You remove the plastic to expose the adhesive. Center it as evenly as possible in the bottom. Next, slide the pedal into position. Loosen the wing nut for the clamp. You might want to lift the base drum up a little bit, slide the pedal into position, and slide it onto the hoop. Clamp it down evenly and firmly. Try to make sure that the pedal is centered at the bottom of the hoop. Next, we'll do the rest of the hardware. Open the base and place it on the table or the floor. Tighten the wing nut to secure the base. Next, you want to locate your snare basket assembly. Loosen the wing nut. Put the basket in an upright position. Tighten it back down. Slide the basket assembly down into the base. Tighten the wing nut. Open the basket. If the basket doesn't open all the way up, use the butterfly nut to loosen or tighten. Next, grab your snare drum with the white or batter side up and place it in the basket with the snare throw off on your left side. Once it's in the basket, you want to tighten that butterfly nut again to secure the snare drum. Be careful not to over tighten. Tighten it enough to secure the drum. Now you'll notice you have an adjustment for height up or down, and you can adjust the angle of the drum or the basket. Next, we're going to do the cymbal stands. Locate your cymbal stand. If your set came with a two-part cymbal stand, you'll basically assemble it with the base, and the top tilter section will go into the base. In our case, we have a three-part cymbal stand. Open the base and set it on the floor or your work surface. Tighten the wing nut on the base. Place your center section in the base and tighten it down. Grab your tilter section, loosen the wing nut. Swing the tilter into an upright position and lock it down and place it into the middle section and lock it down. Now you want to place the symbol onto the tilter. Remove the wing nut and the top felt washer. Place your ride symbol or your crash ride symbol onto the tilter base. And place the felt washer and the wing nut Tighten them down, but be careful not to over tighten. You want the symbol to be able to swing or move freely. Now, if your kit came with a boom symbol stand, you would set that up in the same fashion as a straight stand. The only difference being that the boom stand has a tilter telescopic arm at the top. You can make an adjustment in that fashion. And once you have your adjustment set, there's a memory lock feature that you can slide down into position. And you can secure that feature with your drum key. Let's do the hi-hat stand next. OK, finally, our last piece of hardware is going to be the hi-hat stand. Now, this comes in three sections, the base section, the top section, and the pull rod with the clutch. First thing you want to do is remove the rubber band from the radius rods.
Then place the stand in upright position and open the legs. Place the radius rods through into the holes of the base frame. Then you want to secure the legs, making sure that the frame is even with the floor so there's no rocking or tilting motion. Next, take your pull rod and insert it into the base. Thread it in evenly till it's firm and secure. Remove the top clutch. Take your top section Place that down into the base, leaving about six to eight inches from the top of the base, and secure that. Next, we're going to put the uh, symbols on the Hyatt stand. The bottom symbol goes on first, and that would be the heavier of your two symbols. In this case, we're using the pearl symbols, and that's marked bottom symbol. Put that symbol face down. over the rod onto the stand so it's setting, resting on the felt washer. Next, take your clutch, remove the bottom lock nut and one felt washer. Take your top symbol, place the rod of the clutch through the top of the hole of the symbol, flip the symbol over, put your felt washer on, and your lock nut. You'll notice the lock nut only goes on one way and when it's fully tight it will stop. Flip the symbol back over, place it over the pull rod, and leave approximately about an inch of space between the two symbols. Now you'll notice that there are some adjustments on a Hyatt stand. The first adjustment is the top symbol play or tension, which you can do by adjusting the nuts here on top. There's also the symbol seat adjustment or tilter on the bottom here. And on this model, you also have a spring tension adjustment, which is used with a drum key right here. And also for extra adjustment on this particular stand, the footboard can be adjusted to swivel from side to side. And this is especially handy if you use a double pedal, which we'll show you later on. You may or may not have purchased a throne with your kit. If you did, you would set it up in a similar fashion to all the other hardware. Open the base legs, extend them fully, tighten the bottom nut, pick up your seat, place it over the rod, secure it. In the case of this throne, you can adjust it by spinning it counterclockwise or clockwise to adjust the height. Now, Pearl strongly recommends that if you didn't get a seat that you look into getting one as soon as possible because you will be playing your drums probably for many hours at a time and you will want to have good posture and comfort Pearl supplies a whole line of thrones in many styles and price ranges. Now let's set up the drums. If you have a piece of carpet or a rubber mat that you can set on the floor or the area where you're going to play, that'd be a great idea now to set that down. You want to place your bass drum in a clear area where you have easy access to round the drums. Now we're going to put the tom-tom arms into the bass drum first. Your export series drums will come with a unilock tom-tom arm similar to these. Make sure you leave the memory lock adjustments towards the outside for easy access. If you purchase the form series drum kit, you will have deep gear tom arm holders. There is a specific right and left tom holder. Make sure that the wing nuts are towards the outside as well as the memory lock nuts also for easy access for adjustment.
Okay, now that we've put our tom holders into the bass drum, let's mount our tom toms. Grab the 12-inch tom first and mount it to the player's left side onto the holder. And tighten the wing nut. Remember, you have a memory lock that you can adjust to keep the drum from moving from side to side. You also have an adjustment to adjust the angle of the drum up and down as well. Now I'll grab your 13-inch tom-tom and put it on the right-handed mount. Remember, if you're a left-handed player, you may want to set the drums up in the opposite fashion. Usually left-handed players set up their drums in a mirror image of a right-handed player. Okay, now let's grab your throne, place it in a position where it's comfortable, where you have easy access for your bass drum pedal. Now we want to place the other drums in position, our floor tom, and then our snare drum. And then we're going to put our hi-hat in position. Remember, when you place the hi-hat in position, you want to get it where it's comfortable also, just like your bass drum pedal, where you have easy access to that pedal as well. Okay, now would be a good time to adjust our hi-hat stand. Now, I prefer my hi-hat to be a little bit higher, so I'm going to do that. Don't forget when you adjust your hi-hat to allow about a one-inch gap between the two cymbals so you'll be able to play it. Now I'm going to put my two cymbals into place. I'm going to put my ride cymbal on my right and our crash cymbal on the left. Remember, when you put the cymbals in place, try to adjust them so they're not blocking any other cymbals or drums. Let's do that now. Now that we have our drums in a basic setup formation, this would be a great time to start making the adjustments to the different angles and heights of our cymbals and drums. Now due to the fact that we're all built differently, some of us are short like myself, some of you are tall. You have a lot of adjustments on all these drums and cymbals to suit your personal needs. Remember, there's no right way or no wrong way, and you might want to take the time to experiment with different positioning of your cymbals or your drums and find what works best for you. Remember, the more natural things feel, the easier it's going to be for you to play. I think it looks like we're ready to tackle tuning. Let's remove our 12-inch tom and tune it. I'm going to place the 12-inch tom in my lap so I have easier access to the lugs. Now, what, if you remember correctly, we had all the lugs were finger tight on the drums. What we're going to do is take our drum key and start tuning the tension rods about one turn at a time, one full turn, and in a crossing pattern, and then a star-like pattern, we're going to go around the drum and try to evenly tension the head. Now we've done each lug one time, Let's check and see where we're at. What we want to do is tap near the tuning rod at each lug and check the pitch. The idea is to try to get an even pitch all the way around the drum head. Now, if you've achieved that already, then you already got the drum on too. Now, you can hear that the drum is still a little bit loose. So I'm going to go and tune each lug a little bit more. Let's see where we're at.
That's a good starting point. Now let's flip the drum over and do the bottom head and do the same with it. Now that seems like a pretty good starting point. Now what we want to do is to talk about the relationship between the two heads, the batter head and the bottom resonant head. Now there's many options you can do for tuning. Some people like to tune the resonant head or bottom head the same pitch as the top head. Some people like it to be a little bit lower pitch to have a deeper tone. And some people like the bottom resonant head to be a higher pitch than the top head to create more overtone. Basically, when you strike your batter head, you're moving air and vibration down the shell, and it sets off the overtone or vibration of the bottom head. Now, let's see what our relationship is between the two heads. Now, right now, our batter head is a little bit lower in pitch than our resonant head. That's the way I like it. Let's put it on the drum and see what it sounds like. That sounds pretty good. Now we're going to do the same thing with the tuning for the 13 inch tom and the 16 inch floor tom. Okay, now that we've basically tuned our three toms, let's talk about pitch difference or interval. An interval is the difference in pitch or tone between two different drums. Many drummers like to tune their drums approximately a fourth apart, which is something like this. Now you can do the same between the 13 inch and 16 inch floor tom. The idea is to try to get a nice even tone on each drum and get that nice interval from one drum to the next. A smaller drum usually will be tuned to a higher pitch and as the drums get bigger as we move through the kit you would want to tune a bigger drum of course to a lower pitch. Now that we've tuned our three tom toms you want to use the same procedure and tune your bass drum and your snare drum. We've already done that with our kit so what I want to talk about is the snare throw off. And this is the feature that turns the snare either on or off. With the snares on, it'll sound like this. With the snares off, it'll sound similar to a tom-tom, but higher in pitch. Now when you adjust your snares, you can either tighten or loosen the snares with this nut over here. The idea is to try to get a nice, even, crisp tension on the snare. Be careful not to over tighten so you don't choke the drum. Now that we've got our kit basically set up and tuned, we're going to put some mics on the kit and cut a hole in the bass drum and put some dampening inside to control the overtone to get a better sound for our instructional part of the video. If you like the sound of the bass drum with a hole in it, you can go to a music store and get a template to cut that hole, and I'm sure you can find a pillow or a blanket and put it inside. Looks like we're ready to go over a few basics. Let's start with how to hold the drumsticks. Now there's two commonly accepted ways, match gripped, where both hands are the same, or traditional gripped, like this. I prefer match grip, I'd say 90% of the time, because I feel like I get more power and evenness since I play a lot of heavy music. Okay, one of the first things I'm going to show you is what we call a rudiment. There are 26 rudiments. The one I'm going to show you is called a paradiddle, and that contains a sticking technique or drum strokes hitting the drums of right hand, left hand, right hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, left hand. Let's try it slowly. Okay, what I try to do is do this slowly at first, gradually building up speed until it feels comfortable 
always trying to remain even. And then after I get a little more comfortable, I will try moving my limbs or hands around the different drums or cymbals and applying that rudiment, like this. Give it a try. Now I'm going to show you a basic drum beat, which will incorporate the closed hi-hat with our right hand, the bass drum with my right foot, and the left hand on the snare drum. Now I'm going to play the same beat, but this time I'm going to move my right hand onto the floor tom and you'll see that it has a different sound or a different feel to it, even though it is the same beat. And then halfway through, I'm going to move my hand up to the ride cymbal. Check it out. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to incorporate a couple drum fills or drum breaks as they're sometimes referred to. Most of the time, the main objective of a drummer is to keep the beat or keep good time backing up a band or singers. But occasionally, you're asked or called upon to play some drum breaks or fills. So I'm going to play the same beat as I played before, and I'll incorporate a few different breaks or fills. Check it out. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is a double bass pattern. Double bass is something I really enjoy. For this application, rather than incorporate two bass drums and two separate pedals, I'm going to use Pearl's double pedal. Now, to play this double bass pattern, I want to be able to play it with a closed hi-hat, so I'm going to incorporate Pearl's drop clutch, which is an accessory that you can check out, too. It drops the clutch just like that. You know, now that I've added that Pearl Devil pedal on and the drop clutch, this is a great opportunity to show you some of the other add-on accessories offered from Pearl. What I've done with this kit is I've added on a power tom set, which consists of an 8 and 10 inch tom and a double tom floor stand. I also added a splash cymbal with a cymbal arm that goes into the tom tom receiving plate on the bass drum. Back here I added another 18 inch crash with a boom stand. And back here I have a china cymbal with a straight stand. And last but not least, an 18-inch floor tom. Now, the great thing about all these add-on accessories is it helps you personalize and customize the set so you have an individual kit that no one else has, and it suits your needs. Now, let's get to that double bass exercise. OK, what I'm going to do for my double bass exercise, I'm going to start off with a basic double bass pattern with my feet, playing time with my hi-hat and my snare drum over my feet. Then I'm going to start gradually moving around the kit, incorporating some of these add-on accessories and the rest of the drums. Check it out.
Here's another kit configuration using one of Pearl's patented drum rack systems, set up in a fusion style. Now a rack's a great way to incorporate a lot of drums, a lot of cymbals, and other accessories without taking up a lot of floor space cluttered up by cymbal stand bases. We also have some add-on Pearl accessories in this setup, like a clamp-on cymbal arm, two different types of cowbell holders with Pearl cowbells, and then we have a pair of closed hi-hats which clamp on to any cymbal stand. And this is a great way to play double bass with a closed hi-hat all the time and still have the option of using your opening and closing hi-hat over here. Now let's check out another kit. Remember the bottom line, your setup is your setup. Whatever looks, feels, and works the best for you is what it's all about. Now I hope this video has helped you get started in the assembly, setup, and tuning of your kit. We showed you some basic drum beats and drum fills. And on behalf of myself and Pearl, we want to thank you again for your purchase and wish you the best in mastering the art of drumming. Remember, have fun and practice makes perfect. You know, speaking of practicing, I think I'm going to get a little in myself right now. <laughs>